So this is the box. When it comes out of the box, it looks like this. All right, and it's all put together close up like this in the box. So the first thing that you need to do is take these clips here and you're going to move it by pinching the clips so that the red bar goes to zero. Okay, so see you have a zero. Okay. The drainage system gets mounted to an IV pole. Okay. So you want to use the string, that's your safety, so it doesn't fall all the way down if something should happen. And on the back it has a clip. So you press this in and it opens it and you put it on the stretcher and let it go and it attaches. And you can see it attaches here as well. Now you need a transducer in order to be able to read what your ICP level is, your intracranial pressure level. It does not come in this box. Right now, in order for us to get a transducer, you're opening the A-line kit. Okay, so this is your arterial line kit that we have right in recess in the cabinet. All right, and when you open it, you have the whole A-line setup that comes out of here. You do not need all the IV tubing. What you need is this piece, the transducer right here. So you disconnect the IV tubing. from both ends. And now you have the connection for your cable to your monitor and your transducer. You want to remember that the little black spot in the middle is the actual transducer and that's what does the measuring. So this is the part that you're making sure that you're leveling. The other thing we do is we cut off this blue twanger because this is used to flush the system and we never want to flush the system with IV fluids. So we cut it off just so it's not there. When our equipment comes in, the actual transducer will come in a package like this so you won't have to take it off the arterial line kit. Okay. At your zero point is where your transducer is going to attach. Now when you're doing this, you're making sure all your connections are nice and clean. You're not really touching this with your bare hands. Okay? All right, so there's your transducer. Okay? And it's attached. You always want to make sure that on this end is a dead end cap and a dead end cap so that there's no air flowing in either direction. When your transducer comes out of the package, it's either going to be open or it's going to have an open-ended cap. You need to make sure that we place a closed end cap because we don't want air getting into the system. This package comes inside with the transducer and you can see there's no hole there to allow airflow. And this is the type of cap that needs to be on the end. Before you ever hook the system up to the patient, you want to make sure that you've cleared it of air. So it's like flushing an IV line. You wouldn't hook anything up to a patient with air in it. So we want to make sure that there's no air in this. So in order to flush, you need 30 cc's of preservative-free saline. And that's this one in the vial. You cannot use saline pre-filled flushes because they have preservative in them. So you're holding your catheter and you want to make sure that all your ends stay nice and clean, okay? So you don't want to be contaminating anything. This has a stopcock, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use this port to flush down toward the patient end. This is not connected at this time, okay? So you wanna turn the stopcock down here to here so that it allows flow from there to there. And you wanna make sure that the stopcock up here is off because we don't want it to backflow yet. cleaned your home. So you're going to flush downward to make sure all your air is out and then you're going to turn your stopcock to off so that no saline goes down through the end of the catheter and you're going to flush and this is going to push after you open this up to the top and you want to push nice and slow Okay. 
and you're going to flush all your air out of your system. So your stopcock has to be turned off to your transducer so that your flow from these arrows is going up and down. And you can see your saline is dripping into your burotrol. So then you want to check and make sure you don't have any air bubbles in your line. Okay. And then when that's done, you're going to turn the stopcock off to the burotrol and you're going to make sure that it's off here so that it's not flowing out of your catheter. Okay. So as you're flushing up through the catheter, when you're done and you get rid of your bubbles and you want to try and flush a little slow so that you don't get air bubbles in, if you notice that there's an air bubble in the connection here, you're going to turn your stopcock off to your patient. Okay. You can release your dead end cap here and slowly flush so that you make sure there's no air in the system here. So in order to level a system, you're leveling at the area of the tragus for the patient, which is this little front part of their ear that sticks out here. So in order to level, there's usually a string on the back of the ventric setup that has a small level on it that has the green gel that goes back and forth to tell you whether or not you're level. We all so in order to get readings, you have to hook this up to your monitor cable. And it's the same red cable that we use to monitor for an arterial line. So when you plug it into the monitor, Ours usually come up automatically to arterial, so you need to change it. So you're going to use your toggle knob to highlight your art. You push your knob in, and it gives you options. Here it says change the name. You're going to change the name, and you're going to pick ICP. Select it, and you'll see that it now measures for your ICP. So for an arterial line, the color code is red because it's, they consider it blood. For ICP, you'll see that the color has changed to white. So if you're looking for the red box, you're not going to find the red box. The ICP defaults to white. So now you're going to take your cable and your transducer and attach them together. And you'll see on the monitor, it'll start to make some movement. Just like your end tidal CO2 or your arterial line, you need to zero this now. Okay. So in order to zero, you make sure that this is turned off to the patient, onto the transducer, and you open the cap to air because you're zeroing to atmospheric pressure. You turn your toggle knob to highlight zero ICP, and you press your knob in. And you'll see the ICP goes to zero. So then you want to reattach your dead end cap so that there's no air going into the transducer or the patient. And if you're going to monitor, then you need to turn your transducer on. So you turn it off to air and it's on to this flow. Okay, so that would be once it's hooked up to your patient, that's how you get a reading. So once you're set up, is zero, okay? This is when the doctor's gonna take the catheter and attach it to the ventricular catheter that's in the patient's head, okay? And when you're ready to measure or drain, you're gonna turn your stopcock to off here. That's gonna allow flow from the patient up into the setup. Right now, this stopcock is off, so any flow would stop here. If you want flow to go into your burotrol so you're draining, you would turn it so it would go this way. Okay. If you want to measure pressure, you're going to turn your stopcock so it's off to any drainage going into the burotrol, and you're going to turn your transducer to on so that you have flow to your transducer here and it can measure. This is set up to monitor, okay, because it's off to your burotrol and it's on to your transducer, okay?